Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Star Citizen Live, the Mission Feature Team. I'm your host, Jared Huckabee, and if you've never seen Star Citizen Live before, it's where we take about an hour out of the end of our week, and we hang out with some of our developers, we chat, we, 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 sh we shoot the... Oh, I don't want to use my one that, that early in the show. We shoot the stuff, uh, and we talk about the stuff that's uh, been worked on, being worked on, and will be worked on, uh, and stuff like that. Uh, on today's show, we are uh, uh, proud and honored. <clears throat> I'm thinking about the, the conversation we had before. Uh, I'm very honored to have members of the Mission Feature Team on the show. Let's meet Ed and Elliot and Lars and James. And I remembered all four. Hi, guys. Hi. Hello. Hey, yeah, so I. We're, we were just talking about the about how the, you know all those when you're doing like the Nintendo Directs and so yeah, I don't yeah, mean, E3. not just Nintendo but E3 anything like this. I was like, I'm very honored to be here and blah 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 blah. So it got in my head. Sorry. Sorry. I ruined your take. If I were a professional, I could have avoided it. <laughs> but I'm not. Uh, so yeah, members of the Mission Feature Team, uh, you guys make the features that are used in the missions. Way to butcher us. <laughs> That's not completely true. <laughs> this has been... <laughs> How many years has this team been here for? <laughs> How many years have I been here exactly. for? Exactly, it's, it's even worse. All right, so let's just start off, let's introduce you. Some, some of you folks have been on, like, like we all know, we all know Elliot, we're gonna leave Elliot for, for, for last. You've seen Elliot, he was on Citizen Con and stuff like that. Uh, well, let's, let's go, to the, go to the people we haven't seen in a while. Some of you we haven't seen in a long while. Some of you we, we've never seen before. Let's start, with, uh, let's start with you. Who are you? What do you do for Star Citizen? Right, so I'm Lars, and obviously part of the mission feature team. Um, quite a new hire, too, relatively. Um, we're approaching one year at this point, and uh, started, yeah, just working on new features that we'll be talking about later, and did a bit of that in the background, Korea. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Korea? Worked a bit on that. Cool. So. Uh, which, which, what's your title, Lars? I think yeah. I think it's official, like systems designer two. two? Yeah. Oh, um, congratulations! Two behind it. Thank you. The sequels are always better than the original. Uh, we were just talking about Ghostbusters two earlier. Ghostbusters two is a good movie. Uh, James, who are you? and What do you do? Hello. Um, so I'm James Tyler. I'm a systems designer too, as well, like Lars. Um, luckily enough to work on the MFT team. Um, I remember when I got offered the thing, and I felt very honoured to join the team that was already there um, but yeah uh, recently worked on time trials which we'll go over later I believe mm -hmm. um, and I also spent a bit of time earlier last year working on Siege of Horizon with Elliot. Cool. Uh, Ed who are you what do you do and most especially what is your title? <laughs> okay fine well my name's Edward Fuller and I am the senior principal Principal system designer. Didn't you mean assistant? No, I am not that. I think you meant assistant. <laughs> no, senior principal system designer on the mission feature team. And I've been here for over about six and a half years on that team. And so I've worked on all kinds of missions over that time. Um, and we are, I also work on the, the law system and uh, hostility system and uh, also dynamic events, so the one that I maintain, look after, is Xenothreat um, for 318 as well. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and there's uh, some other future stuff that maybe we'll touch on. Yeah. And last and least, Elliot, who are you? Hello. And <laughs> <laughs> the more familiar we get, the worse I get. I apologize. Right, it's all right. <clears throat> so Elliot, who are you and what do you do for Star Citizen? Hi. I'm Ellie Mulvey. I'm the actual senior no, you're, principal. No, you're not. <laughs> I'm the principal designer on the MFT team. Um, I make missions, features, and a bunch of other stuff that you kindly went over all of it. Um, most recently, Siege. In the future, you all know I'm building investigation missions. And I also uh, help Lars and everyone else uh, maintain. I mean, I help everyone their... else as well. Yeah, well, yes. I help you because I'm do. your senior. Yeah, so. well, mm, assistant. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. We, we, we all work together and build a lot of stuff, but I, I'm known for Siege. It's gonna be one of those shows. Uh, so uh, we don't get to talk, we don't actually talk to a lot of principals. I wanna talk about that real quick. Uh, uh, 
folks who watch the shows uh, with regularity, I mean, I've been doing this for going on eight years now and stuff, you, you, it's kind of easy to work out the the associate or junior to, you know, just what it is, one, two, three, and then you get the seniors uh, and stuff like this, uh, and then leads and stuff like this. But principals are, are, are usually kind of off to the side, and we don't get to talk a lot about principals. So what is a principal? What, what, what does that modifier to a title mean? At CIG, anyway. Uh, we'll only okay, speak for CIG. Well, I mean, for me, I think principals are, they're people who uh, specialize in, in the subject matters that they, they focus on. Um, and they are, you know, they really know, they, they, they also are very dependable. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. You hear no. that, Luke? <laughs> no, but they, they can also like uh, see complex features through um, um, and also guide more junior uh, designers and even senior designers and, you know, show the juniors the ropes and uh, show them the systems and talk them through the whole process of developing Star Citizen and stuff like that. I mean, maybe Elliot has something he'd like to add. I, we're, yeah, we're kind of like an information well. So we need to know a lot about all of the systems we own mm. in case anyone come, needs to know something about, say, like, oh, how do I set up jurisdictions? And then they, then they know to come to MFT and they can talk to the principals. Even though we might not work every day with them, mm. we were like a sponge. We have to remember that information and not let any of it go so we can go, oh, right, okay, this is how that worked. But uh, for a lot of the time, we've been writing a lot of documentation. Oh, yeah. So it's, we don't have to documentation. Answer. It's like you, you have so many designers and they, they come to you asking questions yeah. and at some point you're just like, I can't answer the same question, like, 20 times I need to start writing this down and you and then a lot of it's just like pouring all of that information onto pages so that yeah. more and more people can just di digest it in their own time and but the worst thing that comes from that is that obviously we're still building the game as you write it takes you like a full day to write this huge system up and you're like I've done it and then the next day one of the engineers will go I changed how this works and you're like oh right. it's even worse than that because the whole day that you're spending writing on it you're not actually yeah. developing something new so you so your work pauses for a day you spend a day writing it all up so yep. other people go like I'm done and they're just oh I right changed it. while you were writing that I changed this I changed this and you're like oh. that's why there's a there's a lot in in any video game development I've worked a few places but it, it, there, there's a thing called tribal knowledge yeah there's, yeah, there's, there's so cool. much there's so much that is never written down because it just it changes just so frequently and rapidly that to spend time writing it down would be a waste of everybody's stuff. So yeah. uh, it's it's the, the, the tribal knowledge can sometimes get a bit overwhelming, and, and I think that's a big part of where principles, you know, come from. It's 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 the role that I often fulfill, and on my half of the things it's like this, it's this. It's just people like, all right, in 2016. We had this thing where we did this, and like nobody's mm. touched it for a while. What is that? I'm like, oh, that's that's this. this. And you can yeah. go here and find that, yeah. and then you bring out a mothballs and find out it still works, and it'll solve a thing that you need over here, yeah. like that. So yeah, it's uh, it's always a it's always a battle between you know you should write everything down, but you, you know, lose the time doing things. when you're writing, and then you, if you well, know it's going to change next yeah. week, you know it's going to change next week. You don't want to waste that time writing it down now when yeah. it's going to change, but about, you don't know how much it's going to yeah. change yet. About three years ago, I think I remember trying to write a document about how how to uh, put like multiplayer stuff logic into missions, and I started writing it, and then I was like, uh, this is going to take ages, and then I just knew on the horizon it was all going to change, so I just went. Uh, Luke, I'm not going to write that now. I'm just not going to bother. It'll be it'll be out of date by 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 like next week. The page says so, ask Ed. <laughs> yeah, I've well, written it now. Like we've written them now because things are solidified a lot more. But at the time, they they were not super. To solidified. be fair, I've seen both sides of the coin as well. Like when I first joined, I found a couple of little systems where you know I'd go to Elliot and I'd be like, please help me with this. I don't understand it. Um, and then he'd be like, yeah, that part is tribal knowledge and you know, we're gonna do better and we're yeah, gonna yeah. Uh, write that um, documentation down. And then Ed and Elliot have gone away, spent, like Ed, um, Elliot said, you know, a day writing this and it saved us so much time further down the line when you know, me and Lars or whoever's coming back to these things, we can just read it, we, you know, there's GIFs, there's all sorts you right. know, to help us out, so. I try to put personality in mine. I put like <laughs> memes and pictures and then I have to go because Ed is my <coughs> senior. Uh, I, have oh. to I have to send him the document uh, and he goes through it and he's like, remove that. 
Yeah. And I'm like, I'm not oh. that, I'm not that killjoy. It's just. <laughs> oh, yeah. And yeah. I'm very well of the, of the memes that are in there embedded. The, uh, uh, in our Halloween special we did back in 2019, when we did a, we, uh, Jeremiah and I did a sequence called The Things We've Seen. And it was exclusively of memes that were pulled from, the conf from our Confluence pages. Mm -hmm. And so it was, uh, it was all things that had been embedded in design documents and, and process documents, usually in what not to do or it ends up like this. Uh, if you've never seen uh, that, uh, uh, it's on our YouTube channel. It's called The Easy Hab of Horror. Uh, highly recommend it. Uh, ignore the fact that I'm dressed like an old Jewish vampire. It's beside the point. There's a lot of... You'll see a ex great example of the memes that these guys uh, often uh, embed in their uh, confluence pages. Um, let's talk about the mission feature team itself. Now, the, the I, there's some, I don't want to, uh, there, 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 there's some, well, I'm trying to think of the word I want. Uh, there, there may be some misunderstandings or, or what about, about what the team actually does. Because the name is like, you know, for mission feature team, it, it, it's not missions team, it's mission feature team. Now you guys do make missions. We, we've all, we've, had, we've done enough segments where it's like, oh yeah, I worked on this mission, stuff like this. But you guys also make the, uh, the mission verbs, the, 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 the components, the technology that then other people who are not on the mission feature team go and make more missions and stuff like that. Uh, so talk to me about that balance. Like, 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 like what determines whether you guys are the ones who make the mission and whether you guys are the ones who make the technology, like the time trials and stuff like that, that then other people and other teams will go and make their own missions. So we always, we always try to make the first mission. So when it comes to building the feature, the best way to build the feature is to build it in a mission to be able to, able to test it. So you know it works. So we know it works, exactly. So, you know, when we come up with uh, the time trial system, you know, and uh, James will design it and they'll also build the first mission. Korea, uh, Korea, overall, everyone looks at it as the new Korea update, but internally we go, well, that's the location under attack module that is essentially for telling if there are bad guys at a location and sending out a mission to retake it. Then there's the timed item dispenser, which is what Jump Town runs on as well and Korea runs on, is just spit out boxes for us at every X amount of minutes. So we build all those modules and then build something to use them because then we can go to the content teams. We've built this. This is how we used it as an example. And here's all the documentation. Knock yourselves out. Right. And everybody from like uh, the EU uh, lo uh, locations teams to the Montreal teams to anybody else, once they see the, you you've now given them a working example. And uh, once, once, once you guys get around to writing the documentation, they now have the documentation of how it breaks apart and what modules are being used for what. And now they can go and make their own mission yes. content. Uh, we've seen that with the, the Montreal team who are making the, you know, all those new um, uh, crash derelict locations and, and, the, and the shanty towns and stuff. They're using the mission features that you guys have put together yes. now and assembling all their own missions yeah. yes. you, know, you know, from it. Stuff. It's kind of also like, it's good for them because they can focus on content expansion uh, a lot more than bug fixing because uh, I work with, uh, I think his name's, I can't pronounce it, but I'm gonna say Guillaume. It's uh, JT, GT. Okay. Um, oh, Guillaume. Guillaume Theoret. Yeah. Yes. I won't try the last name. I, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry if you're watching, butchered it. Um, so what he'll do is he'll set up the eliminate, uh, the, what we call eliminate all, which is just kill a bunch of people at this location. He'll set it up and then if there's a bug with it, because we own the base system, there'd be a bug with every single one all over the system because they're all built modular. So then he can just go, right, there's a bug here. Off you go, Elliot and then carry on expanding and then we can investigate into if it's on our side or maybe it's something gone wrong with setup or something like that. So it, it, it just gives them more time to do content expansion rather than focusing on these little bugs that we can quickly do. Yeah. And, and that's how that that that's how this scales. That's how Absolutely. you know pe people like yeah. it, it's it's your you're building prototypes and stuff that are often used in stand and stuff but when you know people are you know when people are concerned that like Pyro will be empty or won't have stuff to do. Yeah. It's like there are other, all these other location teams now yeah. have all the, are they called verbs? Is that what they're called, the mission verbs? Modules, uh, really. Modules? Verbs and modules. Modules, yeah. Verbs That'll are like be the, the gameplay type. Okay, yeah. verbs are the gameplay type. And then uh, the module is what they plug in to achieve that verb. Gotcha. Yeah, it could be multiple, could be one. Yes. You know. Gotcha. So the idea, the idea would then be that with, with all these, well, all these features, all the modules and everything, they, you know, they can now go into Pyro and just, you know, just start adding yeah. missions all yeah, over yeah, the place. It's just like Lego. They're just putting the bricks on top of each other and figuring out what they want to do. I've made some hideous Lego, though. I think, <laughs> I'm sure we all have. <laughs> I think one of the things that stands out as well from MFT is the fact that 
we do make those modules for everyone else to use, but we also think of the developer experience as well within, you know, how do they want to use this? How, you know, how can we speed up the, the um, mechanic for them to even just place it in the, the game and whatnot? Yeah, and modules aren't done once they're, they're made. I mean, yeah. Elliot's probably adapted some of those modules, like added new features as content teams want to e express missions in ways that they current modules just don't, don't quite serve. And then he goes back in and, and they, they adds those inputs and adds that functionality and, and then even more possibilities are possible. And back to documentation for all yeah. those <laughs> uh, you, you make an interesting point, James, about it's not just, it's so often assumed that we just make things for the players. But there are many teams, I, like I love when I get to do things with the tools team or whatever, and it's about the stuff that we make for the developers. You also have to make this interfaceable, usable by all the teams, and then you will get requests from other team members like, this, me this module is impossible to use, I can't get it to do it. Can you just, can you put a button over here to skip this step? It's like that, is there an interface? Is there like a specific interface for the mission features uh, to use the modules? Like, 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 like if, I, if I'm on the Montreal team and I'm, I'm gonna make a mission, and say, so, okay, w w w what am I opening up to build it? Is it flow graph, is it? It's documentation. <laughs> they open documentation, it tells them in which tools they can do what to do what. Um, when we talk about, say, having that developer experience, when you, like, for anyone else who opens up stuff like UE5, that is a highly po uh, polished engine for wide use. Yeah. If any other games company, it is not widely polished. It is make it work, and then the devs can usually figure it out. And sometimes it is the most horrible or like very difficult to do uh, sort of pipeline. However, we make a big effort to try and go, right, well, if we put this here and put this here and this here and that here, that's gonna make it more obvious. And, and we'll document it like this because they, they need to read the documentation because right. it's not always 100% clear. So there are little bits and bobs where we'll will change how something works purely so on the front end of it for a de another developer, they can go, ah, that's what that does, that makes more sense. Yeah. And we do a lot of heavy lifting on the back end to save them having to do that pain on the front end. Some plain English inputs and stuff like that. Mm. Uh, but in the background, it's all like cable. Crazy crazy cable. <laughs> Ch chances are, over the longer course of development, there will eventually be some kind of interface. Absolutely, like, so it does improve. Like, yeah. like the, the tools guys are working all the time yeah. on making it better, yeah. and we feed that back to them, and and they make it better. I've, you know, yeah, it's, I, I, it's I got, always. I got tagged on Twitter about in the monthly report. Uh, there was a mention of the Subsumption Apollo, yes. a tool, yes. and they're like, like, "Hey, will you will you do a segment and tell us about the Subsumption Apollo?" And I and I, I went to the AI guys, and I'm like, I'm like, "Hey, what what what, what the heck is Apollo?" Yeah. Like, it's basically a GUI for Subsumption. That's that's all. It's yeah. it's it's it's, yeah. it's it's just a little wrapper that sits on top of of Subsumption and let, lets them access it while inside the engine, so they don't have to go to another program. Yeah. But it is essentially just an interface. Yeah. Uh, that, that that sits on top. So eventually there'll be something like that. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and then and then this will just keep exponentially yeah, growing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So let's talk about three eighteen. Uh, 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 we'll start with the time trials, James, because we've already mentioned it. Um, the time trials was was a new tech that that, that 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 you guys developed that basically unlocked all of these location teams to suddenly start going. Oh, we can now add races here and there and there and stuff like that. Um, how did that come about? Well, as you mentioned, um, you know, un unlocking those areas for those teams was one of the major goals there, and um, we thought. Uh, when it comes to racing, you know, how, how can we make an implementation that can be used in so many different ways? Because obviously the PU is like a sandbox, you know, you want to be able to just plonk this down wherever you want, um, you know, you want to make interesting locations. Um, so when it came to racing in general, um, we'd looked what came before. So um, we had scramble racing in the past um, and we wanted something new um, and we looked at what people um, enjoy doing um, and we looked at the community in general as well like there's so many amazing racing communities out there um, and what they'd done is they had these leaderboards on a website you know that people raced around now you had to you know trust the person had done that in that time or you know there was no way of them um, actually you know having their times or anything tracked in, in, in officially um, so it, we ended up um, coming together me Ed Luke um, working on this design together and thinking the best ways of basically giving them those capabilities of being able to do that in the game. Um, time trials akin to kind of rallying was kind of the first thing that came to my head 
Um, I'm a big fan of rallying um, like Colin McRae and whatnot. And it also kind of benefited as well in a way that you didn't need a million different other people in that one location to do the race. You could, if no one else came to that location, still have a fun time on your own. Um, that led us to, yeah, the current implementation, really. Um, we do have some future goals, and I think Ed will speak more on that. Right now, though. Um, maybe. In the future? <laughs> yeah, in the future. But, well, maybe in the future of this show, but it's 318. So. Yeah, but it was, it was super fun to make. And, um, it's Ed your joy. Being, look at Ed yeah. being such a good guest. No, we're on the topic of 318. Keep it no, I'm, yeah, yeah, keep the show on, yeah. on uh, track. Uh, I'm uh, like Tom <laughs> Holland, and I'm you know, trying so, to so, spill yeah, stuff. No, so, but, but it's another good example of uh, you know, when we were doing the, this, this, the feature segments on ISC, uh, because that story was about the, the physical creation of the racetrack and stuff like that so we saw a lot of artists and things but it's a it's a it's a wonderful reminder that we can't put everybody who works on a thing in a single you know segment and the stuff mm -hmm. there there's these are the people who have been who have stepped forward to tell this story uh today but there are many folks underneath from uh, from mission feature folks to tech artists to animators to everything that all make these things possible yep. uh what else did you work on that's that players can look forward to in 318 Korea is coming out. The new Korea? So, uh, yeah, that Which was... Which were parked outside. Oh, yeah, that's really cool. Depends on what side of yeah. the fence you're on with Korea, too, if you enjoy it or not. Yep. PvP for focused, we tried for, so... Yeah. Some yeah. people might not as much enjoy it, but um, this universe is meant to mesh everyone together, so... If you, gotta, if you don't like it, you've got to try and avoid it. Or be a good citizen, right? That's the other way. Be good. Yeah. Like I said, that's, that's the easiest way to avoid it, is don't break the law. Exactly. Of course, yeah, just of course we, need, we, need the, uh, we need the hostility system and law system to like always work. I mean, we, we are you, always you, 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 you can't put You can't put uh, the emphasis entirely on the place. We're can, always, you're all bad. They, those are systems, they are it, systems it, it, that belong to us, and we do constantly monitor and look at those. Yes. Luke is constantly right, on yeah. spectrum. We're always on it. You'll probably see his blue little avatar pickled at random. Hey, thanks. I'll look into yeah. this. Yeah. So, so, so when it's all like perfect and operating, you know, then we can blame. Exactly. And until then, you know, we share. We share a little. Yeah. Hey, if you got problem at Luke directly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Pickle the random ones. Send your letters of attention to yeah. Luke Presley. Thank you. Yeah, he's. I know he's watching right now. I'm sorry, Luke. Yeah, pick your target. Sorry. Uh, what else is in three eighteen that you guys worked on? Uh, uh, the Horizon missions. The um, uh, go to a go to an horizon island and uh, kill people. I saw a couple of people playing. Uh, uh, Citizen Kate uh, did a video on it. That was very uh, very fun to watch because uh, there was this odd thing where she was playing it, and uh, the the server performance was really good. So the AI was acting how they was meant to, and they were snapping. And it got to the point where in the video, <laughs> I think she said, "I need to put a silencer on because I keep just getting." <laughs> annihilated from miles away, which was very nice. Um, it's a first. It's a first step to sort of. Branching out some of those missions into new locations um, and making more use out of it because you know we, yes. we built those we built those platforms for the Siege of Horizon dynamic event, but when the dynamic event is rise, not running, you had this location, this it's beautiful, gorgeous, free. well crafted yes. location that wasn't doing anything. So you know it's a you know double dipping where possible is a hallmark of all video game development. Yeah, uh, it, it's 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 if you can build something for one use, good. If you can build it for three uses, amazing. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, so there's new platform missions uh, in 318. Prison. In what? Oh, yeah, yeah. The prison yeah. stuff yeah, and stuff, the yeah. jump town changes, both done by uh, our other designer, Max. Um, so he made the prison mission. He's made it so there's AI wandering about. You kill them. You can loot them. You can um, then sell the loot to the contraband kiosk. We actually recently made a change where we were having a problem where uh, people had to go to this one little area to sell the contraband and sell all the mineables, and then you had some some of the bad players we talked about stood there waiting. Shout out to and Salty just, Mike. There you go. Just just hammering the bad people. people murdering the bad people. <laughs> just like killing people. So what we did was we was like, right, let's move the mining kiosk to three different locations to give those people a bit of a chance and sort of spread it out a bit more. Um, so we implemented that. And then the other thing Max did was uh, the Jump Town changes. We added two item dispensers into Jump Town. So there uh, is now more boxes that you can get. And we also uh, snazzed up the location with the help of the uh, art team and the locations team, added a little bit more. So it was less of a one entry sort of thing because that's a choke point. We wanted to add a few more ways of getting in and out. And uh, we've seen some amazing videos on that as well. We Love watching all of them. Tiz and Kate again. Bed Bananas did a good one. Yes. yes. Burks. I had to do. I had to do two entire quarters of content on 318. I've seen it all. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Put the patch out. Put the patch out. 
Uh, what else is in 318? Oh my God. Uh, that you guys worked uh, on. Well, no, I, on. Mean, I mean, I've, I've been working on Xeno for it, trying to get that uh, up to speed with 318. It's a lot in 318. I mean, persistence is, is the big one, the big fundamental change. So, you know, making a dynamic event work in those situations, it's a lot, yeah. to, it's a lot to do. I, I imagine just little things like now it tracks mission progress, and, you, and that, that part, that part in the Mobigas where it actually says you've actually done the missions. I saw, I've seen people on PTU, it's like, oh, I logged out. I did a mission oh, well. like a week ago, and I came back, and it was still yeah. listed there. Mm. Mm, yeah, it? well, uh, mission persistence isn't something that we'd, we have right now, properly in, th properly in 318. We will need we to, need. I mean, I'm just stepping you back like here. <laughs> well, I'm just, I'm, it's, more, it's more that persistence is, uh, it's just that, so much has changed since Xeno Threat was right. last run. Right. It touches every system. Every right. system has persistence in it or not in it or whatever amounts of in it. I might be um, wrong, wasn't there a bug like oh, previously because of persistence where if the javelin was destroyed, its records stay there? And then the other javelin was trying to come in. Right. I don't know. I think that sounds no, like a I, I, saw, I saw that. No, I, oh, I saw that. Yeah, the javelin yeah. stayed, and the next javelin came and in. Came in uh, like, was there? We right. have that with. Uh, we yeah, had that with yeah, the AI reinforcements that land. They land. If you blow that ship up, the other one just like, well, I, I'm still going to try land there, even <laughs> yeah. though you still exist. And yeah, yeah it's a yeah. fun thing to battle. No, we we will be seeing the changes mandated by persistence for the for the next year, for the next two years. It, it's, it's all these things, everything, everything up to this point was made for the game in a certain state. And now with persistence, there's, all, there's changes to the AI. Like, hey, if there's already a crashed ship there, you know, because yeah. it, it didn't have to worry about that yeah, before. Yeah. It's like, oh, maybe we don't land there. Landing there is a bad thing. You know? it's, also hard, it's also quite challenging to work on a game that has persistence turned on by default. Because what we do is we, uh, we run servers locally and, and test our stuff. But if you shut that server down, it persists. So when you run your server from nowhere, it's, it's still there. And all the stuff is exactly as you left it. Sometimes that's annoying because oh. you're like, you're looking for a fresh state, but it isn't. That's persistence. And so you're like, this is like making games again. I've never made a game where I have to worry about persisting things from my previous run. It, it, you really do have right. to think in a new way right. to work oh, on yeah, that that's a, situation. That, that, yeah. That's a great point. I hadn't considered that. There's, there's a, lot of, a lot of folks um, have like a second computer under their desk and whatever where they run local servers, you know, because so, they're working on a thing. And it, for every time up until now, you could just count every time yeah. you load it in, everything was you reset it, to zero. Goes, you could just yeah. start from fresh. But now it's like, oh, where did I leave this <laughs> with this last you test? Also, when you're fixing bugs, you have to be really mindful of that because you're thinking, Okay, is this is this bug still here because it's persisted? Because mm -hmm. I had I had an issue with that. Right. With, I was setting up some elevators, and um, it was there, and the bug was there. I fixed it, I fixed it, and then I, I ran the server again, and the entity had changed. I fixed it, except it persisted in the broken state. So I was like, okay, fine, okay. So this is only a bug in this moment. In this so moment, if I yeah. you know purge uh. the lock, go again, it really is fixed, but. You know, it, it's it's challenging, but it's 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 kind of fun. It also messes with our debug tools, like um, so. You know, these are all we'll, good we'll, things, by the way. Yeah, these <laughs> are all good. <laughs> it's good. It, 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 it's good. We're just telling you that <laughs> this is just the war stories. The views stories. and opinions of Ed Fuller do not represent those of Cloud Imperium Games, Armored Space Industries, yeah. or its subsidiaries. Positive war stories. So, yeah. in the debug thing, when we're playing, like, so I'm testing a UGF mission, or I'm uh, waiting for the shuttle uh, because I'm testing something. And I'm stood there and then like lads are like, hey, you got a second or James like, you got a second. And I go over to them and then I come back and I haven't turned God mode on, which will stop me from dying. And all of a sudden my, not good. Uh, yeah, exactly. I'm terrible. Good. My <laughs> food and my hydration levels have gone to zero. So my guy is having the worst time of his life. He can't see anything. I can't hear anything. And then I'm like, oh, I put on God mode and then I, I do my bug. But then every time afterwards, when I log in, my guy is still dying of hydration permanently until I actually purge the server and restart. So I'm stuck in that hellscape of... Uh... So, so basically your guy is 44 years old. Yeah. I think, yeah. I think the funniest thing that happened to me was um, <laughs> during tri time trials prototyping, because of persistence coming in and I didn't you know, realize what it was going to do, um, I'd logged out prior, like mid-race, you know, went away for my lunch. I came back to record a video for an internal review kind of thing. <laughs> Thought I was doing really good in this race. I was beat, you know, getting on time for the platinum. 
And then um, all of a sudden, my wreckage was just at the end of the race, and I just smashed straight into myself, which, you know, ended my, my race yeah. prematurely. That wreck from uh, the previous plane. Yeah. On Korea, we actually were debugging it, and all of a sudden, we fly in, and there's three of the the chief of security, they're super bosses, they're super tanky. So I come in there with a pistol just to test something, and there's three of them, like, there he is, and I just got lit up instantly. It's like, right. that's a problem. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Zezer in chat is like, I wonder who Jared was referring to. I was referring to me. I'm the one that's constantly dehydrated and exhausted. All right, so we've only got a few minutes left. Uh, let's talk about plans for the future. Uh, I, will, I want specific dates. Oh, no. And, no, and no, no, no. Um, no what's, what, what, what's, what's next for the mission feature? We, 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 we know investigations are in the mix yeah. somewhere, developing investigations. Let's just follow up on that real quick. How, how's that going? Uh, yeah, it's going well. Um, working, we're still at the stage where we're working very closely with narrative. Um, because they might be making a story and it might have a certain scenario in it that I've not considered on the system side that I have to like go reconsider. For example, one of the stories that the, the Adam, one of the narrative people had made up, um, he just added a little a little note is like set dressing. There are two like cocktail glasses on the side of the pool. And I'm like, I didn't think about spawning set dressing. I should probably spawn set dressing. So then I have to update the thing, but that's all, all a part of the iteration. That's why it's good to get the stories first because then I know, right, my system will achieve everything here. So yeah, investigation's going well. Cool. What else are you guys working on? Uh, salvage missions at the moment. Salvage missions. So uh, yeah, we wanted a way to kind of show the, the new salvage mechanic. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, I'm currently working on some different, like different legalities and versions. Show over the three of them. Sure. Uh, so there's a legal version where we have a, a new company that's being made. I'm not sure if I can call it yeah. that. It's called Adagio and they're literally just salvage contracts. So they have just, they have a bunch of salvage and they sell you the rights to a piece of salvage. Like you pay us like X amount of credits or mm -hmm. Uh, UEC and then like that's like here's your lot number you can go get it there and then you fly over and then it's, it's yours to keep and it's kind of in the safe area mm -hmm. of, uh, of uh, this point like a Lagrange point where they kind of towed it there and then there's the um, illegal version where basically uh, another uh, an illegal corporation a new one called the Tar Pits um, they're like well they hear about salvage and they're like well you can go there but we know that um, security forces are going there to investigate what happened you have an hour good luck and then you basically have to race there. And once you're there, like, you have an hour, you have a timer on screen. And if you're staying there too long, well, then all of a sudden, like, you know, fighters come in or, like, other investigative forces. And if, you know, if you're in a, a vulture, for example, well, that is not really good at combat. And we're actually uh, trying to get a, a mission giver, which I won't spoil who it is. So have fun trying to discover that. But a new mission giver, we're going to give him, uh, him or her some love. And they're gonna actually do a kind of a, a mini rush where it's like, well, there's been a massive battle somewhere in the middle of space. Um, there's a lot of money to be made, but it's an open contract. So here you go, but you might find people. And then it's, we're really trying to have emergent gameplay, community focus. So it could be three vultures are like all happily salvaging away. And then an org is like, yeah, this is our salvage now. And they come in with like a reclaimer and like a whole combat suite. It's like, okay, kids, move aside. This is ours now. Uh, just to, every time there's a question about a mystery mi mission giver, chat goes, Tessa! Tessa's coming back! Who's it's, Tessa? It's not, yeah, it's not Tessa. These guys don't know who Tessa is. Tessa? That, that predates these guys. That's not true. Uh, I wasn't even born. Ed knows who Tessa Ed knows who Tessa is, but it's not Tessa. They, they've got a thing for her. Her time will come eventually. It's actually three Picos and a trench coat. So I'll spoil it. Right so, exactly. Uh, what about you, James? Uh, What's in your future? Um, I think at the moment mine's top secret um, yeah, until it gets a bit of a director sign off. But um, I'm still keeping an eye on time trials as well. Um, the big thing for us at the moment is there's a lot of data coming in for our, our analytic, analytics. Um, so keep everyone keep playing them because we need that data. We really need that data. Um, so we can make the platinums harder. We can see if people are crashing. We can you know we get all kinds of data from that and which is the most popular ships. Um, that all leads us into you know. Um, helping us with our design decisions down the line, but that's what I'm maintaining at the minute. Yep. And how you, Ed? Uh, well, I'm allowed to talk about that we have, <laughs> we, have uh, we have a planned uh, a new dynamic event, which will be like classic racing. So it'll be like, uh, like lapped based racing and it will be uh, multiplayer. So time trials is single you against the clock, whereas this will be like 
people together, racing together. A racing dynamic event. Yes, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And and the the plan is to have uh, we'd we'd have maybe two new ship tracks and maybe a ground race um, in there as a mix. And then we'd we'd also uh, limit it so that you'd have only a specific ships or ship would be allowed to race on the race day. Um, yeah, and uh, you guys else? are also working on yeah, there's well. mining missions to go along yes. with the salvage missions. The uh, the mining missions are what we're calling resource rush. Uh, essentially, once again, we give you uh, you you're buying the rights to a location that's uh, far out, and there's going to be like a an asteroid cluster gas cloud thingy, and um, we spawn a bunch of min mineables in there. And essentially, what it is is that each player can buy the rights to go there, and then they have a f finite amount of spawned resources that they have to mine. Now, we make the contract open, so it could be Salty Mike, but I don't think he'll last long. It could be Burks going in and <laughs> everyone fighting. Um, he's just really bad, isn't he? He's terrible. He's so I, I don't bad. know why he still plays the game, but I've got no clue. <laughs> um, There's absolutely no reason for us to pick on Salty Mike today. I mean, after all, he's a CIG show and we, yeah, so we secretly pay him under the table. Yeah. The words for I have ruined his the life game. today. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Salty Mike. Um, and and the so the mining <laughs> missions are you know also we talked about you know making multiple uses of things. Obviously, a lot of the same salvage kind of underlying tech for that stuff. And then um, in the monthly report, this will be the last thing we talk about before we let you go. Uh, there was some talk about uh, researching uh, defend your ship. Oh yeah, yeah, m yeah, m yeah. M missions. It's not really missions. It's sy system. It's yeah. like. It's it's probably what everyone's sort of been clamoring for. It's it's not mission. It's um, it's, it's the system. right it's the right to sort of defend your ship, it's which is probably what everyone together. really wants, right? Yeah. They want to be able to stand their ground in their ship. That's what that is. And not get a crime stat. And not to get a crime stat. So That's not what a mission goes into us building other stuff. You know, we we don't just make missions. Absolutely. Me, Ed, and Luke are also making it, looking at a system and trying to improve the law aspect of that someone you know, might not have the right to defend the ship from an intruder or someone yeah. who's on board. It's like, well, I can't legally kill him because he's not got a crime stat, but it's like, you've not given permission to be there. So it's, it's systems like that, and we work on a lot of those as well. We're, we're always reading, um, like, Spectrum, I'm on it, like, every night, which yeah. is terrible, really bad. But I read all, all the threads on there. And I'm anything... Yeah, on Spectrum, yeah. <laughs> so which, so which terror? <laughs> yeah, and, and Reddit and, and, and the other ones. And we're just, I'm always like zeroing on the ones that map, uh, the things we own, like hostility yeah. and law, and, and then we're always just picking them up and sending them in, and the next day our embedded QA are just going through everything we found, and, and we're just always trying to improve those systems and make them better. No, I'm, I'm actually really glad you said, you said there, there, there's, there's, all, there's always this, there's always this, persistent kind of narrative out there that, oh, they only listen to the streamers, or, you know, we've, no, we've thrown a lot no. of shade at Salty no, Mike today. We, we only listen to the streamers or the YouTubers or whatnot. So it's, it's, it's heartening. You know, I made a joke, but it's, it's heartening to know that there are, uh, you know, uh, devs, individual devs who are still going to the internal forums and, you know, reading the things yeah. that people are posting. It's really interesting. I, I love reading the forums. I mean, there's a lot, of, there's, there's everyone's got a voice there and, um, I can't respond to everything. In no. fact, I do respond very occasionally, but I don't because it's not in my wheelhouse. I'm not the authority on it. That sort of reason is yeah. why I can't respond. And even if I am sort of the authority, I'm not really sure what we're going to do, yeah. so I can't yeah. really answer it. And we, so and we talk I can about still how read it. You don't always have the time to write your documentation. It, the time spent writing this replies is, outside, is time that's not. That's outside of my yeah. work hours. That's, yeah. that's stuff I do in my own. I, I, Sometimes right. I'm sat at, home, um, at the work desk eating my lunch. Um, <laughs> probably shouldn't be at the you know my desk eating my lunch on on lunch. But I'm scouring through Reddit myself, and I'm just typing in race. And then re if you if you said something that has the word race in your comment, I have probably read it in the last yeah, month. Yeah. Um, it's the good and the bad, you know. What I mean, you, you got to proper take boundaries, yeah. work life balance. <laughs> I need to set a little alarm. I so just stop reading. Talk about second. Luke. I'd like to see this mentioned in his uh, quarterly review. <laughs> it's just too interesting, you, though. You get very personal about it. I remember yeah. I was watching uh, a couple of streamers over Christmas, Christmas Eve. Uh, playing Korea and something broke, so I just remoted into work on Christmas Eve and was like, I'm gonna fix this. Yeah, which is super hypocritical because when I tried to do it, it's I, like, I was looking, he's like, it's your holiday, get the hell I out of here. I'm be like, a hypocrite. I don't want all in. of them to do it, so I'm like, you know what, 
let's have a rest, I'll do it. I'm still spying <laughs> on all the Siege stuff and I'm not even working on that anymore. <laughs> I just want to see what people's feedback are. Uh, so if we learned anything this week, it's that game devs have poor work-life balance and because fail to draw boundaries. <gasps> or we build them, or we watch them. No, it's, it's, it's heartening to hear that you're so dedicated. Um, that sounded like one of those E3 things. Uh, guys, thank you so much uh, for taking the time. To be here. Uh, to, I'm honored. <laughs> it was a honored pleasure. to privileged yeah. to have yeah, you on the show. Such to all of you. Uh, um, uh, I just got to ask who's on your water bottle real quick. Give him a oh, shout out. Oh, that's one of our QA, um, all JV. So, uh, here, give me the water bottle. Take it up to the camera. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, 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 Tom, do we have my close up? We, uh, do we have my close up? Our, our embedded QA have there this kind of thing <laughs> where they kind of keep uh, screenshotting people during uh, Microsoft Teams meetings. <laughs> and one of our QA started editing that, Jamie and, and uh, the emote so, is from a, from a streamer I really couldn't enjoyed. be here, but he's on your, your He's there hydration. now. Uh, All right, that's Elliot, Lars, Ed, and uh, James. And uh, I'm Jared, we're gonna take a short break, and when we come back, uh, the mystery of the Elmses. What does that mean? You have to stay tuned to find out. See you in a minute. Are you? Traveling the stars, exploring the galaxy, that's lonely, lonely, hungry work. Always remember though, Big Benny's with you. Big Benny always has your back. Big Benny, eat his food. Kelto. Esports and the Bad Token Race Club are proud to bring you a championship event like no other. The Stanton 7. This exciting rally circuit pays homage to Earth's classic rally and Formula One traditions, pushing drivers and their teams to their absolute limit across some of the toughest terrains Stanton has to offer. Qualifying teams will push through seven individual races located across the system from the isolated moons of Crusader to the bustling city centers of Hurston and Microtech. Each race, pilots will control a featured vehicle from the rugged Drake Dragonfly to the lightning-fast Tumbrel Cyclone, navigate perilous terrain and conditions as well as one another. Racers will face off on Magda, crashing through mountain passes and dusty valleys. Walla, where jutting cliffs and deep craters force pilots to thread the perfect line. And Cleo, where one wrong move means plummeting into a lunar sea. Racers will pick up individual wins across the races, but only the team with the highest overall standings can claim the title of Stanton 7's champion. Sign-ups begin soon. Get your crew together and join us for the Stanton 7. You won't want to miss it. And we're back. Uh, that was uh, a little commercial for the upcoming Stanton 7 race. Uh, it's thrown by our, our friends over at Atmo Esports. Uh, that's an old trailer from like two years ago. I went looking to find one and the last one was two years ago. I have no, t no idea if Bad Token is still their sponsor or not, if they're not. Sorry, I just I wanted to promote the event, so I took the only trailer I could find online. So there you go. Uh, before we get to our next guest, I want to start. A, I want to do a thing. Uh, I get messages on uh, Spectrum and Twitter. People are always asking about the the random stuff that are around us that make up our set. Uh, I want to take a minute to showcase something uh, that you may not otherwise have noticed or whatnot uh, each week. Uh, this week, I want to talk to you about this. Do we have my close up? This is a hunter. The Star Citizen comic, uh, comic by Adrian Atisor. This is actually a fully illustrated comic 
set in the Star Citizen universe. Uh, it was create. It's written and drawn by one of the OG uh, Star Citizen backers, a guy named Aiden Tezor. Uh, this was uh, uh, produced uh, in conjunction with Crash Core, uh, a, a lovely org out of Germany. Shout out to Crash Core. And it was originally uh, printed up and given away at our Gamescom uh, 2015 uh, event. You can see uh, the Köln Cathedral here depicted in the futuristic year of 2945. So these very limited, can't get them anymore. I'm amazed mine still survives, but uh, it's very close to my heart. And one of the first things I got to really put in motion here when I got hired into Star Citizen. So shout out to 80 uh, if you're watching. I haven't talked to you in a while. Uh, all right. Joining us on the show now, in the back half of the show, we like to, you know, we, we, we do all the information and the business in the front, and then we have the party in the back. It's, it's, we're essentially the mullet of Star Citizen. Uh, joining us for, for the mullet is Robbie, uh, Robbie Elms. Say hi, Robbie. Hi, hey, everyone. And Nick Elms. No relation. No relation no, at all. <laughs> <laughs> no association. So, uh, uh, Robbie and Nick, uh, who are you and what do you do for, 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 for CIG? Uh, well, I'm Nick Helms. Um, I am a creative director now responsible for the flight side of Squadron 42. Okay. And, uh, yeah, uh, I'm Robbie Helms. I'm the lead designer on Squadron 42, specifically the flight sections. Gotcha. Now, this is where I do the biggest disclaimer I'm going to do. <laughs> we are not talking about Squadron 42 today. Swan to secrecy. Hey, hey. Quiet from the peanut gallery. The, you, 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 this, there's no conversation about Squadron 42. That's not what we're here about. Uh, if you're upset, send your letters to Salty Mike somewhere in Florida. Uh, you were on the show. You were on the show this week because you, you're folks that we don't get to, 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 to see a lot of, to talk a lot of. But uh, you have something unique amongst most people in, 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 in CIG. You are actually father and son. Yes. Yeah, we are indeed. Yeah. In fact, we've started to work together uh, probably, was it 2011 or something like that? Yeah, 2010, so, 2011. Yeah, we've been work, working together for uh, about 12, 13 years now. Long time. Uh, I, I, I'm going to ask Robbie this first. How is that? Are you okay? The worst critic. <laughs> the worst. <laughs> no, no, it's good. It's frustrating at times, of course. It managed to turn me back into a teenager with a lot of the feedback, but uh, <laughs> strop, little strops every now and then. Yeah. But uh, I say it's from a good place. Cool. And and Nick, how did you? Uh, was it you who brought Robbie in? Did Robbie bring you in? Who, who got here first? I, I got I got here first. Uh, I was working with Robbie, uh, sort of going back to TT when uh, we were doing the Lego games and things. Yeah. And uh, I thought, right, you know, why, why have a dog and bark yourself? Uh, I'll uh, I'll bring him across here. Well, I remember there was like <laughs> no hope for me as like when I think it was four. You got me a Sega Mega Drive. Yeah. It's like here, here's X Men. Here, Street Fighter, get good, and just no hope from there onwards. I got hooked on games, and it's that all That was my excuse for research, though, when you were, used it, to come yeah. in, you know, the, uh, the Nintendo 64, play no, GoldenEye. I, well, that's it. And, uh, that was my, yeah, that was my birthday present, yeah. and I woke up to him playing GoldenEye, <laughs> and he's like a Bill Murray moment, like, <laughs> no one will believe you. Kind of. <laughs> yeah. It's research. Yeah. It, 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 it's a meme. It, uh, we're not gonna, this isn't a GoldenEye promotion thing, but it just had its uh, remaster released on, on, on consoles. But it's a, it's a meme online about that pause music. But that really was, that pause music was, it went harder than it had any right to. More, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, I have, I've seen, I have, I have many strong game. memories. Sorry. The watch, and it says drop in. Yeah, <laughs> uh, uh, set, set to that pause music. Um, had it, so, so that's how you, that, that's where you got your kind of start and, and, and inspiration in gaming. Yeah. Nick, how did you, of everything that you could do with your life? I, I, well, I started off working with Chris, you know, we, we were kind of sort of you know, just finishing school and just playing around with graphics on the BBC Micro. And, uh, you know, he, he was doing uh, his games, Strikers Run and Match Day, and kind of said to Phil and I, because uh, we were all, we all liked doing art, we all did art at school. Uh, he said, come, you know, draw some pixels, let's, let's, let's do some stuff on here. So we did that. All of a sudden, he's driving around in a really flashy car. And Phil and I look at each other going, what, what, what's happened here? And he's like, you know, sold this game. And he's like, yes, what did this? And, you know, he's, he's minted. Um, so then we sort of cottoned on to this. And, uh, you know, sort of Chris hung around for a bit. And then he went to Origin. And, uh, you know, obviously the rest is history. So you've been with Chris for a long time then. Yeah, well, I, I, um, I went to training. I, I, I was sort of on the tech side and I was training um, companies. I was one of the sort of only authorized Autodesk trainers of 3D Studio. So I was going around to games companies um, in the area, training their staff how to use 3D Studio. 
Uh, one of them was like a company called Rowan Software, which did a lot of flight simulator games. So I was teaching them how to build planes, and I kind of got, well, I can, I can do this. I can do this for a living. So um, Aaron came back to the UK, set up a studio for EA, and pulled a load of us in, and that was me and the games industry from there on. So that's you in the games industry, uh, but, but you mentioned Chris and you in school, and your, your association with Chris goes, goes far back. Now this is, this, okay, we have to tread a little lightly because <laughs> we forgot to tell Chris that Nick yeah. was going to be on the show today. Chris, so, 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 so <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to thread a needle here because I want to know about your... Uh, I want to know about your early associations here. Uh, how far does your relationship with Chris go I back? Mean, we, we, we went to um, primary school together. Uh, it goes back a long way. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I'm glad you gave me a heads up on that earlier because you know, being put on the spot with, uh, you know, tell me a story about Chris, I think uh, could have ended <gasps> a career suicide for me. I would, I would never do such a thing. <laughs> tell me a story about Chris. One that hopefully won't get me fired, and I think you know anyone who's obviously seen Chris will, will, will probably uh, you know attest to uh, it's, it's, it's fairly accurate. It's, uh, go back to when we were like sort of 15, 16, and we used to play D&D. &D. Um, Chris kind of got bored with the wooden delivery from the DMs. You know, you'd be in a room and somebody drove in on his like, you know, this needs more immersion. It needs spicing up. So we got this idea to bring his friends in to do voices for the creatures. You know, we're in a script. Um, he's, he's getting sounds like rain sounds and stuff or wind sounds in the background. And he's having us all doing these crazy like, you know, orc voices or uh, dragon voices and things like that to play as an, a, a tape recorder while well, he's DMing. Right, this is long before the internet, and you know, there's yeah, all kinds yeah, of resources yeah, for that this, now. But. Yeah, this, this is like, you know, I don't say how far back it is, probably about, yeah, about 40 years back, nearly. <laughs> so uh, so uh, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going to keep pushing. What, what, kind of, what kind of DM was, it, was Chris? It, it, was, it was fantastic DM, but the thing is, I think it only went for about three sessions because it was so work intensive. <laughs> and like I said before, we were all quite good artists at school, so we're even drawing uh, you know, concept art for, for environments and like that, just to sort of like have the maximum amount of immersion um, for, for this game. But yeah, I think we got about three sessions in, and everyone was like, Jesus, this is too much work. <laughs> it's, it's like a job. We're only at 15. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was an experience. I think everyone who played those campaigns, uh, you know, even for three sessions, would remember it. Certainly Aaron and, and my younger brother, Simon, who's uh, the yeah. final, financial... Yeah, I was going to say, you, 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 you brought Simon into this, so let, let, let's, yeah. let, let, let's go ahead and mention this. Uh, it's not just Robbie and, 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 and Nick who, who work here at CIG. Simon is also a member of the yep. team here. Yeah, yes, yep. He's, yeah. yep. He's the, yeah. Throw a stone, you might hit financial on, director. on the floor. <laughs> yeah. well, yep. well, I, fi I find I only run into Simon when I've done something... Uh, expensive <laughs> and bad. Yep. You, you know, it, it, my, my, my only interaction with Simon has to come with like, you're building a spaceship. Yeah. I'm like, hi, <laughs> Simon. <laughs> yes, we're building a spaceship. <laughs> really? I'm like, yeah. I feel I'm partly responsible for that as well because I, I used to sort of steal his pocket money when he was a kid. So uh, <laughs> I think that drove me into accountancy. <laughs> it's the only career he could. Uh, Go are, are there any other Elmses here I don't know about? Well, Jamie was here for a while. Had, yeah, my younger brother was QA for a summer, wasn't he? Before we yeah. exiled him to Australia Quitter. and New Zealand. Quitter. He's been to New Zealand. He's been in New Zealand for the last five didn't, years. Didn't cut it. <laughs> <laughs> so um, uh, you're here. Yeah, you're, you're here. We, we talked a little bit about your history with Chris. Let's let's talk about. Uh, uh, you, you've now been here since the UK studio opened. Ten, ten years nearly. 20, nine months. No, nine years this month. Yeah, you, you just had your, yeah, yeah, your nine year anniversary, month. yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, what's, what are your, uh, um, again, we're, we're, I've, I've got this, you can't see it, but I've got the angel and the devil on the shoulders here, and there are things I want to ask and things I want to push for, and just this yelling in my ear, and I'm like, I'm like no, you... you you need this place, you just moved to the other side of the world, stay employed. Um, uh, 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 when, I, when I ask what's your favorite story from your time here, you've been here 10, you've been here 9, uh, what's the first thing that comes to mind? It doesn't necessarily have to be your favorite, but when I ask that question, what was that first story that just popped into your, your head? I think for me is, because we have essentially here from the ground up, near enough, mm -hmm. is yeah. when we first got, and this is not just even squadron related, when we first got quantum travel working, and it's like, oh my God, we can, we can achieve this kind of moment of like, oh, the scale of what we're going at. That was like when the penny dropped for me, is like, we can do this, it's gonna be great. That's probably my story. Yeah, I I'm, might I'm as well going back to, uh, you know, when we first started to get some of the rushes in from the, uh, you know, the actors and the, the, the sort of the, the team that 
Chris assembled was just mind blowing. Uh, and seeing that coming in, and then seeing the amount of it that was coming in, and going, oh my God, this is going to be huge. It's like <laughs> hours and hours of it. Yeah. And, uh, uh, it was so impressive. I, I, those two moments, I actually have stories about both those two moments. When, when, the, when, when Quantum was first, uh, was first introduced, and then we, uh, uh, we were in the testing, uh, somebody had had a, 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 a ship inside the other ship. I, I can't remember what the ship it was at this point. And somebody just got the idea what happens if we try to leave in the middle of quantum? And like everybody, everybody around was like, we have no idea. <laughs> it's like, we don't know what's gonna happen. And we and got in while, while, while the, and got and disembarked from the ship in the first quantum and that ship stayed in quantum and was flying with it. And it's like, holy cow. And it's, it's just, it, you build these systemic yeah. you, you know, things and there's what they're intended to do and then there's what you discover they can do along the way and it's a huge part of the game happy development. Accident. That, was a, that was a huge moment. Yeah. Uh, uh, for me, and then you talk about the performances in Squadron 42. Uh, a moment I will never forget is in the LA studio when we watched the first rush, the first assembly of the, of the Bishop Senate speech yeah, that's before CitizenCon 2015. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was all still black and white and white box and barely animated. All you really had to go on was Jeff Zanelli's music yeah. and Gary Oldman's, Oldman's performance. Yeah. The Vandal, and I like I just remember seeing like the hair start yeah. start start going start going up on the. Uh, on, 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 and there's a, I remember there's a, there's a, there's a code, there's a code of that story. I definitely can't tell, but, um, <laughs> but yeah, just, I, I will always remember that. Like I'm, I've, I've got it right now, actually, just <laughs> yeah. going back to that moment, uh, stuff. When so, Hannes and his team got hold of it as well, you know, they really did yeah. it justice. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And before anybody calls me a liar, there's not a Squadron 42 story that is a watching a video story. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, so, I mean. That's, that's pretty much it. We're actually pretty much out of time. Nick, Robbie, thank you for hanging out with us. Is, is there anything, you don't get a whole lot of opportunities to, to, to talk to the community, interact with the community, because you're, you're on the, you, 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 you're hidden in the Squadron 42 dungeon on the eighth floor. <laughs> yeah. uh, um, is there anything uh, just about your experience in CIG? You've, you've been to Citizens Cons before, you've been to Bar Citizens. Yep. Is there anything you want to tell the community while you have a we well, have a moment here. We're just so grateful for the support. Uh, you know what, what you guys do for us is uh, it's amazing. I think Salty Mike's had a bit of a rough time <laughs> during yeah, the stream. Yeah, we were saying before. Yeah, he, you've been he a bit. Paid hard me a compliment once, so I've not forgotten that Salty Mike. Oh, <laughs> I've got a head of lettuce, wh how, whatever that means, but I'm going to take it as a compliment. <laughs> it's. I I, I want to point out. <laughs> That my job is to make the shows. I, I I I host these things for like one and a half hours every week. The other sixty plus hours is done with all the things that go into me. I'm not a professional TV show host, um, uh, and and so the moments where I just get stuck on something, hyper focus on something, I'll just drive them into the ground. I apologize uh, to Salty Mike and to any any <laughs> any trauma or or, or dismay uh, that may be caused by you being bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so for Star Citizen Live, uh, Nick, Robbie, thank you so thank much you. Uh, for taking your time uh, to hang out with us. Uh, folks watching, if you haven't already, uh, be sure to check out yesterday's uh, uh, Inside Star Citizen with a look at the Arena Commander feature team. All kinds of stuff coming uh, to Arena Commander. Some are in 318, the dying star fixes. Uh, uh, the, the majority of what you saw is coming in a, in, in a patch uh, uh, later this year. We, we can't quite predict where because we're still trying to get 318 out and then that's gonna affect all kinds of branching things and stuff. So, so we know it's coming, we just can't quite pinpoint where it is, but as soon as you know, we know, you will know. Uh, and then uh, tune in uh, next week uh, next week uh, is our next Journey to 4.0 special, uh, which, we, which was an initiative we started back at CitizenCon last year. Uh, we have uh, uh, lovely, lovely Ian, the art director for Stars and Live, uh, presenting to you the very first look inside building interiors. These are the new modular uh, uh, creations that are going to help us populate the commercial buildings of ArtCorp, uh, Area 18, of, of Lauraville, of uh, Orison, uh, you name it. So uh, stay tuned to watch that. And even Microtech actually, I was like, which one am I forgetting? The cold one. So yeah, so, so tune in for that next week on Inside Star Citizen. Uh, I'm Jared Huckabee. Uh, this is Norman. And uh, we'll see you next week, everybody. Take care. <laughs>